In this tutorial video, we're going to take a look at hiding game objects in Unity's hierarchy view. I will show you the objects hiding, how to make it happen, and also show you how to make those objects not so hidden anymore. So what is a hidden game object? Well, it's a game object that's had a flag set that means that it won't be shown in the hierarchy, as you can see here with it switching to visible and invisible. Now, as with all tools, you should use them responsibly. Even though I'm gonna show you how to create hidden game objects, it doesn't mean you should just use them all the time for everything with a they don't need to know attitude. I've seen a lot of developers create items and game objects where they say, well, my designers, my artists, my other programmers don't need to know about this item, so I'm just gonna hide it away from them so they can't mess with it. That's not really the way to deal with things. And it's not the way Unity deals with things in areas like the inspector, where you can switch between a debug and a normal mode. That's the same way I treat hidden game objects, where I might put them there, but you can switch them on and off to see what's happening within them. So basically, you should think carefully about why you're using hidden objects before slapping them on everything. Now to curiosity, let me know in the comments why you would use hidden game objects. And if you're already using them, what are you using them for? Okay, so we've seen a game object be hidden in the hierarchy. But how do we make that happen? So in scripts, we'll create a C-sharp script, and I'm just gonna call this component hidden. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. Here we go. And this is the basics that get set, but I'm gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna get rid of this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the onValidate method because that gets run on a regular basis, and it also gets run in the editor when it's not in the play mode. So we'll be able to set the hide flag here to hide it in the hierarchy. And that's what we need to do. So this dot game object dot hide flags equals hide flags dot hide in hierarchy. And that's as simple as it is. That actually hides this object in the hierarchy. Now let's break this down a little bit. What this component is doing is it's saying the game object has a hide flag and I want to set that hide flag to hide in the hierarchy. So this component isn't actually hiding itself, it's hiding its game object. We can change that of course with hide in inspector, which is another option under these hide flags. And there are lots of other options here that I'm not gonna go into in this video, I'll maybe save them for another video if you're interested, but there are things like don't save and don't save and build and don't unload and there's plenty of other options there. And you can think of things that you could use those for, like if you've got don't save, maybe you're using a temp data op object in your hierarchy. But in this case, we're interested in hide in hierarchy. So if I save that and I come back into Unity, here we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a game object to my hierarchy here, and we're gonna call this the hidden object. And I'm going to add this component. Now watch what happens as soon as I add the component to this object. Boom, it disappears. Now I can still see it in the inspector at the moment, but I can't see it in the hierarchy. Now why is that? That's because as soon as the component gets added to that game object, that onValidate function that we saw in the Visual Studio code, this one here, gets run immediately. And that then sets the hide flag to hidden. But let's not stop there. As I said earlier, in the inspector, you have a debug and a normal mode. And I want to show these hidden objects every now and again, because I might want to debug them or see what's happening to them, because I might be using some data on them that might not be working correctly. So at the moment, it doesn't help that in my hierarchy, I can't see this object at all. So how are we gonna show them? Well, I'm gonna do it in a very simple way. There are multiple ways to do it, but the easiest one is just to create a menu item that can be switched to show or unshow our hidden objects. So I've done plenty of menu items in the past, but I'm gonna run through it quite quickly. I'm gonna create a script under my editor folder called hidden menu item. And under here, we'll reload. And this, we don't need to derive from mono behavior. We don't need any of this. And this is gonna use the Unity editor, and we can get rid of that. Cool, so let's write our menu item. And if you're interested in menu items, there's plenty of videos to watch in my channels, and I'll put one in the description that shows you how to create menu items 
and set them up, etc. Right, so what are we gonna do here? Well, we're gonna create this menu item, but I'm also gonna to want to show a check mark against that menu item to say whether the hidden objects are being shown or whether they're not being shown. So because I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that in the validate method of this menu item. And that means that I need to use the same path for the menu item in both of the validate and normal method. And you'll see this come together in a minute. But if I come into here and I say K menu, and I'm gonna say, we're gonna go under game, which is gonna be up in our top line toolbar of Unity. And we're gonna say show hidden objects. Great. So we'll use this menu in this menu item here. Oh, and then we're gonna say, okay, static void. And what are we gonna call this? Well, let's call it show hidden menu item. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna use the editor prefs to set this. Now you might wanna make it temporary. So you might just wanna create a static ball or something that we can look at, but I'm gonna set it as a pref because I might wanna do it inside and outside of Unity in its, in its mode. So I might not wanna have Unity running, but I might not wanna have to every time I open Unity to reset this because I'm a tools programmer, I might wanna always see those hidden options. So we're gonna set a ball and we're gonna set this ball um, by getting the ball from the preference and then setting it. So what we can do is we can say constant string k pref, and we'll call this pref the hidden flag. That'll do for a pref, and we'll set that there. So we're gonna set the ball hidden flag, and we're gonna set that to the opposite of what it currently is. So we'll just do a negative editor prefs dot get ball and we'll get the pref and I'm gonna set it to false to start off with because I wanna have them hidden as default. So what this will do is every time I press this, it's just gonna be flipping this editor pref around each time. But as I say, that doesn't help me if I want to quickly see if I'm actually showing those hidden items. Because let's say I haven't created any hidden items yet and I don't know whether this show is working or not because there's none available. So I wanna know whether it's flagged. So what we can do is we can do menu item, K menu, and we can say that this is actually a validation of a menu item. And validation to have a return and we'll just call this show hidden menu item validation. There we go. Okay, cool. Right, so what this is going to do is it's going to use the menu.setChecked. And that actually takes the menu that we're interested in, the one that we've got here, and it says, is this meant to be checked or not? And what we want to do is to do that, we're just going to get from the editor prefs. Oh. There you go, editor prefs dot get ball k pref and false. There we go. Cool. And we'll return true. This validation method where you set this to true, basically if you set that to true or you set that to false, determines whether this menu item can actually be used. Now we don't care in this circumstance whether it wants to be used or not. We always want to have it available, so we just return true here. But as I say, in that other video that I'll link, I'll show you what to do here if you want to actually disable menu items. But okay, let's save this. Now, obviously at the moment, all this is gonna do is set an editor pref to whether it's true or false. And in our hidden component, we don't know whether it's set to hidden, whether that editor pref is actually set to true or false. So we want to, check whether it is, and then we want to refresh the state of this particular item. So what we'll do is we'll create a public void, refresh hidden state method. And in this method, we're going to look at that editor pref and see if we actually want to set it. Now, of course, editor prefs are within the Unity editor. So you want to basically encapsulate that here because if you don't, when you try and do a build, this is gonna complain that you're using an editor function outside of the, in your build, which doesn't work. So here we go. We're gonna do unity editor, 
And the one we're interested in, of course, is editor preps. And we're going to get the ball. And here's a little method, a thing that I want to point out. When you're doing this sort of editor preps, getting balls in the scripts, it won't be able to see this constant here because it's in our editor folder. And that basically gets compiled separately so you won't be able to see it. So what I usually do is I have something like a constants static class that holds all of my constant, uh, all of my sort of flags that I want to set globally in my project. And obviously don't overuse this, but it's very handy when you're doing something like we're showing here. So if I come into here and I take my pref, obviously that pref doesn't know wouldn't be k pref because it's just these global consts. So we could set this to hidden flag like that. And then in our menu item, we can remove our pref and just put in here constants dot hidden flag. And that means that we can actually get to that this string outside of, in our editor functionality and in our scripting. Now you could say, why don't you just take the string and write it in this get ball instead of creating this in flag? Well, if I change that string in my editor later on, let's say I've got a conflict and I go, oh no, actually it's, it makes more sense to have that particular flag elsewhere. So I'll change it in this particular menu item that's going to break when this looks at it. So it's good to have a single source for that string. So there, we've got get ball and we know the default is false. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this code here and we're going to remove it and we're going to set the flags here. But what we're interested in is if this hidden is set in our editor prefs. And if it is, we'll use the code that we've already written. But if it isn't, what we can do is we can set it to none. Now, what this does is it basically means that we have this toggle in our menu item that will toggle between hiding and non-hiding. And that's what the none is. It means none of these hide flags are actually set. And what we can do is in our on validate we can use our refresh hidden state here. So it will run this functionality as well. And of course, yes, it will only work in the editor, but we're only concerned about it running in the editor. If on validate tries to run this when it's in run mode, it just won't do anything, which is fine. So the last thing we need to do is go into our menu item and refresh the objects we have in the scene, because obviously we're using the on validate, which will basically be run when we press play, when we press stop, when we change the code, etc., or when we add that component, that hidden component to a game object, but it won't just be run because we've pressed some menu item. So what we can do is we can do a really basic version of this where we just go, give me all the hidden objects in our scene and we can just use a find oh, game object dot find objects of type and use hidden here. So we're just going to basically click through all of them and we'll just refresh the hidden state and that'll do the job for us. Now, obviously I want to point out something here. We're using hidden as a component, but you might want to use this for quite a few different types of data you're hiding or whatever that you're going to use this for. So you might want to actually swap this out for an interface like I hidden and then have that have a refresh hidden state, etc. with that thing in. Or you might want to have a base class called hidden and then derive all those particular data objects off it, etc. But I wanted to point that out that we're just doing the basic option here to show that functionality. So we'll save. We'll come back into Unity. And when it opens, there we are. So at the moment we have it as false and this is the menu item we just created and we can't see our hidden object. But if we press show hidden objects, there it is. It shows it for us. And just to prove it, we can turn it off again and it disappears. And with all that said and done, unlike the hidden objects, don't hide your love for this video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to help that YouTube algorithm. And as always, thanks for watching.